Hi everyone, today I'm joined by Shie Bastida. Shie is an amazing environmental activist. She organized over 300,000 people for the September 20th climate strike in 2019. She is the co-founder of Re-Earth Initiative and has a TED talk that just hit over 1 million streams. And she is only 18 years old. Shie is a really wonderful person. She's achieved tons of amazing things. Shie, welcome to the What You Do's podcast and thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. What is the coolest opportunity you have received because of your activism? The best thing that's ever happened, I think, is like the fact that I got to organize so many people for the climate strike in 2019 because that power of having people on the street and just like 12 kids organizing it is just amazing and I'm super proud of that. So Shie, how do you get to this point where you are 17 years old organizing 300,000 people for a climate strike? What really got me to this point of wanting to they really show up and go out there and do everything in my power to address the climate crisis is the way in which I grew up. Um, so I was already raised with parents who were super attuned with what was going on in the world. And my dad is from the Otomi Toltec indigenous community in Mexico. So I was raised with this sense of reciprocity with Mother Earth, one of like, we receive, so we have to give back. Um, we are here to take care of everything that has been given to us. And I saw all of those relationships disrespected with extractive industries, factories, pollution, that were literally targeted to low-income and marginalized communities. So for me, it was like, I can't wait to grow up and be part of this movement. I have to do it now. I've seen a lot on your Instagram, this quote, which I love, there is no climate justice without social justice. Can you explain what this means to you? Yeah, so, you know, for a long time, and even now, for most people, I think the climate movement, the environmental movement is seen as um, no straws, polar bears, reduce your waste, lower your carbon footprint, plant a tree. And most of these things are like not at like very individual surface level that are not addressing the systemic um, infrastructure that allows the climate crisis to propel forward and that is actually hurting a lot of communities. And I, what I want people to know is that the climate movement didn't start 50 years ago with the first Earth Day, uh, with Sierra Club and 350 and all these white environmentalist groups, conservationist groups. It's actually been here for, for thousands of years because it's the culture of a lot of communities, of indigenous communities mainly, to take care of the Earth. And what I want to see is that culture be our culture that it becomes our norm to actually be conscious of our, about what we're doing. In my indigenous language, Otomi, um, the word for skin mean, is the same as the word for the outer layer of the earth. So you see the connection of just in language and how people are being forced to homogenize to the dominant culture, which is this culture that relies on infinite economic growth without within a planet that has limited resources and even people who say why are you still doing this work if things are not going to change that much it's because the difference between each degree is huge the difference between warming up one or two or three or four degrees is detrimental and that's why we are still in this because whatever we can save we will and that's why i prefer this optimistic outlook um, because it's not about everything that is going wrong, but everything that can go right. It's about putting our minds together. It's about tapping into our, our ambition and our creativity to, you know, tackle the greatest uh, crisis that we've ever faced and turn it into the biggest opportunity. Be a stubborn optimist. Keep going. Know that there's, you know, we, like our brains are so powerful. We've already accomplished all of this and we can accomplish so much more if we only have the imagination and the will to pursue uh, a better world. Shie, thank you so much for coming on to the What You Juice podcast. Thank you for having me.